Talk about being on the tip of the sword. General Motors is placing as its first new product the 2010 Buick LaCrosse. A lot is riding on this new five-passenger sedan that is the first vehicle introduced since the company emerged from bankruptcy in early July. Are they in the ballpark, or is this just more of the same for the general? Left Lane News takes a look. Designed and conceived using GM's worldwide resources, the LaCrosse, which is nothing like the vehicle it replaces, picks and chooses its styling cues carefully. Channeling the Buick Invicta concept car that was shown at the 2008 New York Auto Show, it has been tweaked for functionality in the real world. Designed by both U.S. and Chinese designers, they also look to Germany, Australia, and Japan for their influences. The styling is familiar to Buick customers. The waterfall grill from the Lucerne and Enclave is back. So too the non-functional portholes, this time located atop the hood instead of on the front fenders. Below the belt line of the lacrosse is a cue that might even stir automotive lust in one's grandfather. A signature sweep spear body side styling that is a direct throwback to the 1954 Buick Skylark and 1956 Buick Century. The C-pillar area of this newest Buick's greenhouse reminds us of the GS series Lexus, a design we've long admired. Here it looks good as well. Chrome accents help to shine it up a bit, and stylish headlight designs light the way forward. Regardless, you can choose from a bevy of stylish options to find the lacrosse that suits your taste and your wallet. Targeted towards other mid-level luxury sedans, such as the Lexus ES350, Acura TL, Hyundai Genesis, and Toyota Avalon, the LaCrosse attempts to match them and does a good job at that. The interior, which features many design cues from Shanghai, emphasizes personal luxury with nice use of woods, stitched leather, soft touch materials on the dash, and innovative use of light tube technology to offer subtle blue ambient lighting around the cabin after dark. The leather, as seen in our CXS test model, was nicely utilized, especially in the seats that were more supportive and bolstered than probably any other Buick ever created. A two-tone titanium interior uses gray and beige contrasting pieces to set the car apart. A walnut and leather wrapped steering wheel offer redundant controls for cruise and audio operations. An optional heads-up display helps to keep your eyes on the road. Storage is at a premium here, saving for a couple of map pockets on the door and a cubby under your elbow, which also houses a power port and MP3 plug-ins. We were surprised at the lack of power port at the base of the dashboard, where one would likely plug a radar detector, GPS, cell phone, or other charger in. On the plus side, we love the oversized dual panel sunroof. The center stack is right where you'd expect and looks like the Chinese impression of a jukebox. We think many traditional Buick buyers will be disturbed by the many buttons that make up this stack of controls, but younger, more computer savvy customers will feel right at home. The audio system is a premium hardened Cardin 11 speaker kit that will make any vehicle sound like a rolling concert hall. Buick has managed to incorporate a new design that reflects on its heritage and is adaptable to markets around the world, but particularly in the Chinese market, where it is among the most popular brands. New technologies and manufacturing capabilities have made it one of the best Buicks ever. With the new styling and quality that we have seen, it would be a no-brainer for a new crop of potential buyers to put the lacrosse on their short list of candidates for personal luxury sedans. The trouble is, that list seems to grow every day. GM has hit a home run with the new lacrosse, but what they really need at this point is a game-changing grand slam. Now it's up to the marketplace to decide.